Sir, you'd like to join the SAS. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Not really? Well, yes, all right. That's uh, better. <laughs> so, height? Nine foot six. <laughs> really? Three tons. <laughs> well, bit over. That's better. Mm. Bit over three tons. It's well to be accurate on these matters. Saves complications later on. Ah. All right. Do you have any particular disabilities? Uh, I've got no sense of taste. Uh huh. What in films, music? <laughs> no food. I can't taste food. Oh dear, that might be a bit of a problem. Might that be a bit of a problem? I've just said it might be a bit of All a problem. Right. <laughs> Never mind. Pressing on. Um, special skills of any kind? I look good in black. Excellent. <laughs> How old are you? Ten and a half. <laughs> Shoe size? Twenty-eight. Any particular quirks? Uh, yes, I keep muddling up my shoe size and my height. <laughs> I mean, my height to my shoe size. Oh, there, I've done it again. All right, all right. Are you good at small talk? What, weather and traffic? That sort of thing. Yeah, I can hold my end up. Splendid, splendid. <laughs> How much do you know about the SAS? Oh, uh, well, not much, really. Not really, right. Well, the SAS was originally founded to be a crack secret, elite secret and crack assault force to work <laughs> behind enemy lines during World War II. Right. Now, our role has changed substantially since that time. Now we are here primarily to act as a masturbatory aid for various backbench MPs. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. You see, <clears throat> it seems that a lot of today's parliamentarians are quite unable to achieve sexual gratification without fantasising about the SAS, you see. <laughs> um, so we have to go about the place being crack, secret and uh, assaulting and secret and crack all the time, and as elite as possible, just so these people can keep their marriages intact. <laughs> Doesn't sound very exciting. No. Have you got anything else on your cards? Um, well, we are looking for someone to go through that door there. Which door where? That one, then. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> yes? Uh, hello, yes, I've just been looking for a particular book in the sports section, and uh, it doesn't seem to be there. It's by Ted Cunterblast, and uh, <laughs> I think it's called The West Indies, A Nation of Cricketers. <laughs> in the sports section. Uh, yeah, yes, I've just tried that, and uh, it doesn't seem to be there. Who's it by? Ted Cunterblast. <laughs> the West Indies, a nation of cricketers. That's the one. It's by Ted Cunterblast. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know that, but uh, have you got it? Well, apparently. Oh, good. Thanks very much. <laughs> Some bits missing. Have you read the book before? No. Then how do you know there are bits missing? Is there a problem, Sam? <laughs> uh, yes, this book is incomplete. <laughs> I think not, Sam. I beg your pardon. What you have in your hands is a copy of The West Indians, A Nation of Cricketers by Ted Cunterblast, precisely as it was delivered to us, sir. Well, that's what I said. I told him that. No, but wait, wait a minute. Look at this. Look at this. The West Indies aren't much good at cricket. <laughs> That's all it says. That's the whole book. Did you enjoy it, sir? <laughs> no, I did not. This book is supposed to contain an account of the last five test series against England. All it says is the West Indies aren't much good at cricket. I envy you, sir. I can never read a book twice. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me giddy. Well, where's the rest of it? The rest of what, sir? Of this book. Apart from else, it isn't true. Oh, ha, ha, not true. Isn't it, sir? No. We haven't won a test series against the West Indies for 14 years. <laughs> now, there, I'm afraid I must take issue with you, oh, sir. Oh, go on, Mr Twee. Take issue with him. <laughs> England has not lost a game of cricket since the war. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Even I know that. We do have copies of Wisdom, if you'd like to check. Yes, all right. Let's see them. Come on. Mrs Pert? <laughs> England is great and much better than any other country in the world. <laughs> you see? This is ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous, is it? It doesn't agree with his pet theories, so it's ridiculous. Thank you, Mrs. Pert. Sir, I am a librarian, but I am also an Englishman. To be blunt, I am an Englishman who merely happens to be a librarian. If, God forbid, the day should come when I would have to choose between being a librarian and being an Englishman... Yes, 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 I think I get the idea, yeah, yeah. Good, because may I say that I find your continued efforts to drag down and smear this country of ours to be frankly <laughs> disgusting. I'm not trying to smear and drag down anybody. I suppose you'd rather read books about England losing at cricket than winning, wouldn't you? Well, yes, if it's true. Then I feel sorry for you. He 
he's a knocker, that's what he is. I agree with you, Mrs. Pert. Oh, it's very easy to knock, isn't it, you, with your snide university ways? <laughs> snide university? Or wherever it is you went. <laughs> So often these days, sir, we see, don't we, these so-called clever people who just can't wait to tear down and destroy. And knock. And knock, yes. But do they ever have anything to put in the place of the things that they destroy? No. It's wanton destruction. <laughs> Nothing offered. Well, yes, just a bit of an exaggeration. Just but sometimes you really have to wonder what's happening to this country. You do. 